Well, uh, uh, yeah, we have this rather technical uh, tongue breaker title Using WordPress for leading local newspaper websites. Well, that's pretty much everything that you need to know about the session. Uh, so, thank you. Um, okay, now we, uh, I have uh, some more slides. Uh, uh, there will be a, a tweet uh, coming in a few minutes uh, with uh, a link to the slide share, so uh, you don't need to take notes on everything what's on the slides. Um, some words on me. My name is Christoph. Especially those uh, who are interested in football or coming from Germany will also uh, uh, see a familiar surname. There will be no hair, uh, hair probes or something. Uh, it was, uh, yeah. Just look it up if you're interested. I'm a senior developer. I'm considering myself a WordPress specialist uh, since 2013. That was the, uh, the, uh, the time when I was starting as a full, uh, as an in-house developer. I'm co-founder of the uh, Dortmund Meetup. I will wait a little moment until Everyone is filing in. Oh, it seems like the uh, n not just uh, over there was uh, a little bit uh, too long. So everybody is seating. You always get the commercials. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially the, uh, the, the, the colleagues are the last here. So, uh, and I'm a proud father to a son, and uh, yeah, the company um, I've been, oh, the company I've been working, or the companies I've been working uh, for are uh, three local uh, newspaper companies. Um, the oldest one is, uh, has a history of over 190 years. Um, we're uh, selling uh, a total of 11 newspaper titles, so there will be 11 newspaper websites. The area is around Dortmund. Um, the most known uh, of the newspaper is Ruhrnachrichten, which is uh, the biggest newspaper in Dortmund. And the total distribution area, uh, there are about one and a half, one to uh, one point six million people living, and uh, the company has uh, about four thousand employees in total, and two hundred thousand pieces circulation. That's to the hard facts on the company. So, our status quo and our st uh, our goals. This was our status quo. We had uh, a proprietary uh, software by a small system house, which, which was only maintained by them. They had slow development speeds. We were depending on a quite small partner. The website was big. It had high load times. And especially not just the website, but uh, the RSS feed, which was used for the app it took about 30 seconds to load. So it was ridiculous. SEO was bad, uh, the costs were high, and uh, yeah, the other thing, uh, we had and still have paid and free content. And uh, our plans, our goals were a transition to WordPress. This was um, yeah, so, something like a hard project uh, about uh, from our CTO. Uh, uh, there is actually a talk from me and Sebastian from I think 2018, which is also to be, to be found on uh, WordPress.tv, when we uh, merged two existing WordPress sites into uh, one. This, this was on the Word, uh, WordCamp Osnabrück. It's in German, so but it, there are some uh, good insights. Um, another thing that we, uh, our goal were completely get rid of all legacy dependencies. We have, that we have some self-maintained code and a faster development uh, and also deployment. That it's scalable, that we use a standardized approach. A seamless transi uh, transition, this which will be one of the main focuses for this talk. Um, so that the, uh, in first hand the appearance 
that looked the same, that customers, especially the paying customers, did not get an email, hey, you have, uh, we, we relaunched and you need to reset your password, and that the editors uh, uh, had um, no interruption, and obviously that Google did not say, okay, this is a new site, it has, has no history. We will check at uh, the end how many of these goals uh, were achieved. And to throw in some numbers, um, our biggest website had 8.9 million uh, page impressions in August. And all the 11 sites combined had 16.7 uh, million uh, page impressions uh, in August. So, our roadmap. Someone uh, early first quarter of 2020, we had the kickoff. So we decided we wanted to go live with a single site with WordPress. Yeah, this was our planned prototype finish. As you see, it's not tilted. Because we initially thought we would finish someone early second quarter. Late second quarter, early third quarter, mid third quarter, late, uh, the late fourth quarter. Well, <laughs> so we went live with the first uh, website uh, end of February, February 2021. Um, and uh, <coughs> yeah. Uh, uh, about a month later, one and a half month later, with the second site. This next one is actually six websites that were launched uh, in May. And then two pretty much at the same time um, in mid of June. Well, and the last one and the biggest one, there's a huge jump because all the once at the front, they were able to run on a single machine. Especially those MHB ones, they were very small, they were fresh, uh, they were starting off fresh. Um, there were six sites on a single machine. But this one, uh, I think we had to use a total of six servers, Jan? Was it six servers? So there was a lot of trouble, we uh, had a lot of uh, fails and uh, so on. So it took a total of uh, five months or nearly five months between the launch of uh, MLZ until we could uh, go to the last big one. And uh, what's not uh, on, the, uh, on the roadmap uh, in June and July 2022 all the existing uh, websites that were initially uh, initially launched on uh, um, uh, third-party maintained hosting were moved uh, to an own setup. And early 22, there was a kickoff uh, for um, a visual relaunch, which is planned uh, for launch uh, in the fourth quarter. So. Our biggest challenges was the import of uh, all the old stuff to uh, give possibilities to create and control the category pages and the home page it, at best without coding. So I am a coder, I don't want to do maintenance work. Like, can you please move this headline a bit or, or this or that? I, I don't want to do this. Uh, what I mentioned, uh, logins. Redirection of all the legacy URLs. Uh, we had still a dependency on the legacy ID for uh, tracking and uh, push notifications, uh, etc. Yeah. So let's jump directly into the first solution. The old uh, URL schema was like uh, leg uh, some legacy uh, category uh, name the post uh, name and legacy ID, uh, ID .html. The new uh, URL schema 
was like uh, below. And I used uh, the WordPress hook uh, template redirect for some magic. Because uh, what I'm doing is if a website deliver, uh, would deliver, or a URL would deliver a 404, before the actual 404 template is loaded, template redirect is fine. And in this case, I see the, uh, the actual broken URL. I need to move a bit. And, well, the URL has three unique pieces. The post name, the legacy ID, and the WordPress ID. So I take uh, a regular expression or multiple regular expressions <coughs> and I check for these pieces of the ID. So I first check for the WordPress ID and then for the legacy ID and then for the post name. And in case I find something that exists in my system, I will just redirect to the post I find. So if I go to the legacy URL, there is a legacy ID. And if I see the legacy ID, I find the actual uh, post, so I have a redirect with a single hop from the old ID, uh, URL to the new URL. And, sort of by accident, I have a URL shortener and a self-repair system for URLs. Because if, by example, someone posted uh, a link and uh, placed uh, a space somewhere, well, as long as either postname or legacy ID or WordPress ID is still intact, the system will still find uh, the correct location and do a redirect, which is quite handy because you can just type portal uh, uh, the portal name slash WordPress ID and you have uh, the short URL or the legacy ID, which is the same uh, among all 11 portals is the thing that can come handy for the um, uh, social media teams. As for login, <coughs> I'm using uh, another um, hook, which is the Authenticate hook. Uh, WordPress itself uh, has multiple things hooked into the Authenticate hook itself. So I'm hooking uh, into the same hook at a later, uh, at a later place. And um, if the user, uh, the account is either unknown to WordPress or uh, marked with some um, user meta as a remote account, I will call the REST API from uh, the old partner to check if the credentials are correct. If the credentials are correct, a local copy will be created and uh, data will be uh, loaded like first name, last name, etc. And uh, we also have um, the, op uh, the option for existing customers uh, to maintain their data like uh, address for shipping of the uh, actual newspaper. These are loaded by demand uh, if the form is loaded. One of the bigger things was uh, homepage and category pages. When we started uh, the, um, the project, the, um, uh, the query block was not even mentioned uh, yet. So we um, had to figure out a way of our own. And as I mentioned, I didn't want to um, do maintenance work. So we wanted to empower our editors um, to um, have all of these work uh, for their own and uh, all, all the power for, uh, for their own. So we created uh, a block we called the post list block, which is pretty much uh, comparable to the new query block. It has some additional tweaks because it, uh, it allows filtering by categories, it allows filtering by tags, it uh, you can have multiple categories, uh, you can um, have a, uh, a read more option which uh, loads more uh, into this um, via Ajax. 
uh, or simply an external link like you can have on the home page a, uh, a link to the category uh, Borussia Dortmund and obviously this is not where uh, read more should be loaded but read more just directs to this and you can have a second uh, one on the same uh, site for Schalke 04 same idea load uh, read more on the ex uh, on the uh, existing site um, and another thing which was very important uh, the editors don't just throw in things uh, in a chronological order they have uh, certain articles that are important <coughs> over a longer time so they want some kind of this stick this but not just stick there but maybe stick a little bit lower or stick here or stick there so um, we created uh, con controllable positions at first locally within our WordPress instances in a second step uh, with, a, uh, with a React app uh, that was uh, pushing the information into uh, all the WordPress instances so that the editors need, could have the possibility to say at this position until 3 o'clock there is this post after that there is another one that for all 11 portals all possible uh, sites and all possible positions um, so they had uh, the um, complete power of these sites and uh, besides feature requests we never had to do any uh, maintenance work on these another very very important key part was the importer initially we had the imagination that we run this importer once and afterwards we would be so fast that we also um, have the editors work in WordPress well Isabel I think this is completely off the table for now right at least for the foreseeable future so 